everybody to our presentation today on adverse events and monitoring for CRAs. My name is Linda Carter. I'm going to be your presenter for the day. Before we get going, just to give you a little bit about myself, I've been in clinical research now for a little over 10 years. I started out as a study coordinator for investigator-initiated trials, and I spent another eight years working within the industry as a CRA for a small biotech company, for a moderate-sized CRO company. I've worked as a trial manager for a major pharmaceutical company, and I have experience working in phase one through phase three clinical trials. So. I'm happy to provide for you and share with you my experiences from what I've looked at, gathering adverse events, serious adverse events, monitoring for those events, ensuring appropriate documentation and reporting of those events. And I look forward to hearing your feedback as well. And periodically throughout the presentation, I'll ask you for your feedback by either asking you to type in a response in the chat box, which I know each of you have done with Barb, so you know how to, to use that. Or I might ask you to answer a question and respond to that question using one of the icons that you've also had a chance to look at with Barbara. The CRA source document verification for adverse events is what we're going to be talking about today, and this definitely is by far one of the most important and impacting activities that CRAs can do. And we're going to talk about the verification of proper collection of information, the documentation about subject safety, and the requirements that the site has, as well as what the CRA, expectations of the CRA and the sponsor for the site to collect and to document document and to report. As we go through our source document verification process, we're going to be constantly looking at the data for signs of adverse events. And we'll talk a little bit later about that cross-referencing or that mapping technique that is important for CRAs to develop and to perfect because that is where you find a bulk of the um, adverse events that didn't get reported. As CRAs, when we do find an adverse event, then we start to look for verification of the entire event. There are a lot of things that CRAs have to do and that we're going to look at and talk about today and how those things should be performed. All of the uh, material and all of the, the work that we do in looking for adverse events has a significant impact on the labeling of clinical investigational products as well as the marketing application. And keep in mind that, again, before I move forward, I just wanted to say that keep in mind that if, if there are any incorrect or inadequate monitoring of adverse events, that can lead to the inaccurate labeling of investigational product, or it could also lead to clinical trials that might have their marketing application denied, and it could also have impact on if you're doing any post-marketing trials as well. So for these reasons, it's important that monitors, CRAs, really look and know how to look through the medical record and the subject's source documents to ensure that all the events have been identified and properly documented. The FDA cites inadequate monitoring of source documents as the third and fourth most common sponsor inspection deficiency, and that makes it a pretty significant deficiency. The FDA inspectors also indicate that inadequate collection and evaluation of those adverse events is the third and fourth most common investigator GCP inspection deficiency. So the position of the CRA is one that can ensure the investigator is properly documenting and reporting the events so that the sponsor sponsor can then verify, the CRA can verify the events and collect the safety information for analysis. The learning objectives for our presentation today are that you should be able by the end of this presentation to define safety concepts and reporting requirements, recognize the importance of verifying subject baseline history, determine when to start and to stop monitoring adverse events, apply a detailed presentation of source document verification process in collecting adverse events, and many manage the challenges for that monitoring adverse events presents, and verify appropriate credentialing for the site AE evaluation of event relationship, and appreciate the impact of monitoring on future product labeling, as well as discuss some of the reporting trends. First and foremost, it's always important to make sure that everybody has the same working definition. And as I describe this to you, this is something that you will describe to your sites to make sure that everybody understands the definition. The term adverse event is also used interchangeably with adverse effect or adverse experience. You'll see, sometimes see those terms used interchangeably. 
a working definition of an adverse event is a, an event that is an untoward deviation from baseline health. And I just want to highlight baseline health because that's one of those things I'm going to start harping on throughout our presentation. Untoward means that it's unplanned or it's unexpected. So therefore, the first thing that CRAs do when looking at a subject's medical history is to note what the subject's baseline health is. This is critical that this is thoroughly documented at the clinical site, that the site understands what the baseline health is, and that you as the CRA looking at the medical records is an, has a firm understanding of what that baseline health is. This is the first place that a site can actually run into trouble because they don't properly obtain from maybe the primary care physician or they might have not documented the information from the PCP regarding that uh, investigational subject's health prior to them even entering the clinical trial. And that puts the subject at, and the trial at risk because it's possible that adequate documentation about the subject's inclusion-exclusion criteria might be missing. So when you're identifying an adverse event, the other thing to keep in mind is that it doesn't have to be a causal relationship to the study treatment to make it an adverse event. Okay, So that's a really important concept. It, there doesn't have to be a causal relationship between the study treatment and the event. 